Curiosity is the first step in learning. It's what leads me to open the door into the new idea or the new possibility. Once I am curious, I choose to learn and I choose to see what's next and be open to what's next and be open to, to those who might teach me. My name is Peter Woods. I'm the uh, minister here at Mackay United Church. Curiosity is the beating heart of creativity. Or maybe creativity is the beating heart of curiosity. They're, they're so woven together. It's defined by the possibility of profound wonder being revealed in the universe. That hunger for new experiences, for being curious enough to engage, prompts me to ask deeper and deeper questions. Questions that might put my identity at risk, or my ego, my, my sense of self. But also coming into some knowledge of my, my privilege uh, based on my gender and race, and just that whole notion that, yeah, I can, I, I, I can go down that road, I can be curious. Learning is, you know, it's not just acquiring information. Learning is about change, I, what I think of learning anyway. And I think curiosity is that, that mental space of being open to the encounter in the moment and being willing to be changed by it. I'm Rob Dalgleish. I'm the recently retired uh, executive director, founding director of the EDGE Network. Curiosity is necessary, it's a requirement for learning. We can't get to a new place unless we can set aside a little bit what we think we know. So curiosity, I guess, is that, that space of um, being open. Some traditions call it a beginner's mind, detaching from what we think we know in order to experience something new. Curiosity is the doorway to creativity, to the inner self, to get beyond thinking, to get beyond, you know, our ego, uh, what we are worried about in the future, what we are remorseful about it or bitter about it in the past. See, I studied Indian classical music 40 years now. If you show the ego, meaning the bad side of it, meaning like, look at me, look at this, teachers stop teaching you. Hmm. They just literally shut down. When you become a disciple, you're, you don't pay for your lessons. You get lessons everywhere, in the car, at the dinner, eating, this, that, everywhere. That humility is how you open up your tap. I was so in tune with my teacher, so much so that I could feel him all the time and see him when I play and when he used to say something I was so open it got to me right away. That's the beauty of not having that ego. You can't imagine how much I learned by just letting that humility be me. When it was in me, that humility was my vehicle to bring it back out to everybody. 
in my experience, <laughs> ego might get me in the room. It might be the way that I find my way into this church or in, under this bandstand with these guys. But it's when I come into this space and into this, into this space, humility is the secret ingredient. It's to honor the other. It's to honor you guys and to feel the trust of being honored as a collective that there, now, we're now we've got something that, that feels real and authentic and, and I can grow. I mean, that, that old ego can have a new lease on life. Cause, cause there's Do you something... leave it at the door? <laughs> I know. I, I, I'll go get it. Yeah, sure. But, but I think reminding me that, yeah. that, there's, that, that, that humility is, yeah. is, is essential.